Welcome back. In this video, there's a clip of author Sandra L. Brown. She discusses the public health crisis of psychopathy. She discusses the public just being so very uneducated about this pathology. She discusses the charming glib and the social hiding of psychopaths. She discusses Robert Hare and how he, were, he had admittedly been fooled by psychopaths, despite him being a leader in the field and education on psychopathy. Robert Hare, the author of Without Conscience, Sandra Brown talks about the common traits that psychopaths pursue in their targets. Also discuss is the fact that targets are not random, but are actually very, very much selected by persons with this anti-social diagnosis. And how the psychopath is the most predatory being on the planet, and why uh, the codependent designed treatments don't really work for targets of psychopaths, being that the targets of psychopaths are actually a very unique group of their own. And she, near the end of this uh, clip, went on to discuss her participation and work in designing unique treatments for targets of psychopaths and or persons with antisocial personalities or pathology. I find that this video is very considerate. It was not victim shaming, in my opinion. I feel that it was extremely educational and that you should watch it all the way to the end and don't forget to share it with others who you feel strongly that it will help. Please stay tuned. Thanks for being here. Talk to you soon. You've been in this field for so long. You've helped so many victims. You've seen so many of your victims go missing, mm -hmm. which definitely has an effect on you. Mm -hmm. Why continue to educate about public pathology? Why is it so important? to you to keep doing this? Um, because psychopathy is our number one public health risk. You know, it's not STDs, you know, it's not AIDS. Um, it, it, it's people without a conscience and um, they destroy, you know, um, millions of lives, of productive lives, um, of children's lives, um, and impact every part of our society. It, it impacts not only relationally, but it impacts our legal system, our criminal system, our social service system. Um, it, it impacts every part of our lives. It is a public uh, health crisis in this country and, and um, we'll continue to you know keep shining the light uh, on um, the, the predatory nature of psychopathy. Can psychopaths be cured? Um, well and genetic psychopaths um, technically no I mean we are talking about um, very impacted neurology many parts of the brain, brain size, brain volume, um, brain chemistry, brain circuitry, um, major problems. And to a lesser degree, um, same problems um, in, in narcissism and sociopaths, that there are similar brain regions that are impacted. For instance, a lot of people don't know that there are parts of, um, there are centers of the brain uh, that are responsible for uh, empathy and part of what uh, psychopathy is is the inability to have empathy and that is a brain region and it happens to be one of the brain regions that is impacted in narcissism and with sociopaths with psychopaths and, and so um, no we I think this speaks to why psychology has been um, not 
uh, successful um, in curing these kinds of disorders because it's not a psychology issue. It is really a neurology issue. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and so uh, can they be cured? Um, no, not at this time. Mm -hmm. So the key has to be education. It has to be detection. Mm -hmm. That, that um, our ability to detect um, pathology in other people. And um, until the last few years when there's been a focus on narcissism and psychopathy, there has been no public pathology education in this country. And we did some math, and so we took um, how many, uh, uh, the population of the United States and figured out approximately how many psychopaths, how many sociopaths, how many narcissists. And then we multiplied that by five people in each one of those um, pathologically disordered people's lives that they've harmed because of their pathology. And that's being generous, only five. We, we mm -hmm. know these people do some extreme damage. And we came up with 60 million people in the United States being harmed by someone else's pathology. And I mean seriously harmed. And if that was a medical disorder, if that was can you know a new type of cancer or depression or whatever, um, 60 million people, there would be a national billboard campaign, there would be a celebrity spokesperson, there would be money, you know, towards funding and research, and yet um, uh, what a psychiatrist I, I know said, you know, uh, psychopathy is the number one public health crisis in this country because of how many people um, and children that it impacts and how many societal systems that those harmed people um, are then funneled through. Um, uh, Dr. Kent Keel, who is one of the neuroscientists uh, scientists that have been doing the neuroimaging of the psychopath's brain, says that it costs, psychopathy costs $40 billion a year and that it, cause, it, it costs 10 times more than what depression costs. And yet, we have no public pathology education campaign to teach people how to spot them. They're one of the number one public health crisis problems in our uh, public health in, in our country, and yet almost no help for people to learn to identify it, um, you know, until it's too late. And that's just so alarming, those yes. numbers that you just mm -hmm. announced, so alarming. Sandra, you're doing a great job, though, trying to educate people mm -hmm. about pathology. Mm -hmm. How many women have you, women and men, have you directly helped? Well, I've been in the field for 25 years, so thousands, you mm -hmm. know, by now, and, and, and um, our impact with public pathology education, you know, through media, um, TV, radio, print, our books, whatever, website, you know, millions. How are these people so misreading someone's pathology? Well, um, everybody re misreads pathology. If we've not been educated, there's no public pathology education. How would anyone ever learn um, what pathology looks like? And you know, one, one of the um, one of the telltale signs in pathology is um, the the charming glib and uh, way they hide. Um, and that they hide well. I mean, th this is part of the problem. Dr. Robert Hare, who is the world's leading expert on psychopathy, calls it a disorder of social hiding, that they hide well. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the characteristic that psychopaths, you know, are amongst us in our daily lives. We're not talking about 
um, people that are merely in the criminal population. These are white collar executives that walk in, you know, every field, mm -hmm. and, and that um, part of the way that they continue on is because they remain largely undetected because part of their skill set is their ability to um, hide, to hide well. So, um, you know, if we have if we have a country that doesn't teach pathology education, there there is and by nature their disorder they hide well. Then it uh, it becomes a problem that um, none of us know how to spot them. And one of the things I appreciate about Dr. Hare is that he often tells on himself. You know, he will say um, how many times he's been fooled mm -hmm. by a psychopath. Now, here's the world's leading expert on psychopaths. He works, or worked, I'm not sure if he's still there, but he worked for the Canadian prison system. Mm -hmm. And so he would, you know, draw, pull in to uh, the prison system, and you would think he'd be sitting out in the uh, 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 parking lot getting his game head on. Okay, he's getting ready <laughs> to go in on the psychopathic unit that he would be thinking, okay, if their lips are moving, they're lying. Mm -hmm. You know, let me get my game head on. And, um, and yet he talks about, um, you know, he has their file seeing all the stuff they've been convicted of. Um, he's interacted with them before. He knows they are, you know, very disordered, and yet he's often fooled by them. There are a common profile that women share who fall for these psychopaths, or I shouldn't say fall, get trapped by these psychopaths. Mm -hmm. Well, th there is, and it's, it's uh, been a long time coming, uh, 25 years of working in this field, I kept seeing the same type of person over and over again. And um, it didn't make any sense to me. Um, we work uh, mostly in an outpatient setting that is not a community agency. So we're, you know, a private uh, practice. And so people that were coming in were, were not necessarily people from shelters or things like that. Um, and our average client had a bachelor's degree or higher mm -hmm. um, and were professional women, doctors, attorneys, um, you know, every walk uh, of life. Um, super professional and yet and in their jobs did such um, a great job and then there's this subsector this thing going on in their relationships in which they might be super astute in their career and in the interpersonal part of that they w were drawn into a relationship you know, with a psychopath. And so when you look at that on the surface, you think, how can that be? How can there be a teacher, a therapist, a doctor, an attorney on one hand that is so proficient and skilled and on the other hand, mm -hmm. you know, end up um, in a relationship with such profound pathology? Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to research that uh, there was no research. There was absolutely none. There was all this research on women, for instance, in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, sort of the profile of that that did not fit the profile of the women that we were seeing. And, um, you know, not all psychopaths are violent. And, and um, so those statistics really weren't weren't helping us and I kept looking and looking sort of for the 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 profile of women um, who love psychopaths and there was nothing and so um, several years ago we did uh, the first research project in looking at is there is there something there uh, um, given the nature of psychopaths sociopaths narcissists 
what they do is not random. They target, they, they are predator based. And so they have someone that works for them. And so who is that person? Again, if we go back to public pathology education, if we can figure out who they target we can know who's at risk. Considering that they are predatory based, meaning uh, what they do is not by accident, that we began to ask the question, is there um, a person, are there traits, who are they targeting? Who are they attracted to? Who works for them? in terms of what they are seeking um, to get out of a relationship. Um, what we found were elevations in, in traits like um, hyper empathy, really high levels of empathy, um, high levels of tolerance, very high in what we call relationship investment, meaning that they are highly uh, um, emotionally um, invested in, in their relationships or not, you know, casual ki kinds of relationship. High levels of cooperation, trust, loyalty, um, trust being um, what we call blind trust, mm -hmm. they, that they, they may not know that person from Adam and um, or may have known them a brief amount of time and, and yet um, put all their their eggs, if you will, in someone's basket with without um, necessarily proof of tr you know that that person is trustworthy. Same thing with loyalty. Uh, um, uh, um, we call it insane loyalty, mm -hmm. um, in, in which even when there's um, violations that that happen as the relationship progresses. Um, they don't tend to respond to loyalty violations the way that people who don't have these trait elevations. Um, and, and so there, there were 26, I believe, um, uh, trait elevations. Mm -hmm. And so when you take that as a snapshot, you begin to look at someone that has high empathy, high tolerance, high relationship, high trust, high you know, this is like a cocktail of personality for inevitable harm. And then you take, um, you know, a low conscienced partner um, who looks for people who has these kinds of traits. And you have these relationships of inevitable harm. But also these women have had a horrible time in getting the right kinds of treatment. Um, they get labeled codependent um, and um, codependency kinds of approaches that uh, therapists have unknowingly, you know, used with them have produced almost nothing in their own, you know, recovery and treatment. And so um, the ability to um, sculpt a specific kind of treatment for them based on these trade elevations, um, not only for what they've already been through for a psychopath, but these people are at really high risk of repeating because they are um, who a psychopath wants, not just now, but you know, a psychopathic boss, a psychopathic, uh, you know, it, it could be um, in friendships or what have you, that these people carry their temperament traits with them and they are the ones, you know, at most risk of being targeted again. And so the ability to work with them to understand these unusual trait elevations in them about how they have to learn to um, uh, be in the world, how they uh, given so much empathy, tolerance, tr blind trust, insane loyalty, that um, uh, you know, how are they 
uh, going to learn to protect themselves in the future um, because they will always be a target. I mean, if there's, uh, if you're at a cocktail party and, and there's um, you, uh, a person that has these elevated traits and then there's a person who does not and the psychopath approaches both, who, who do you think he's going to stick to like glue? The one with the elevated traits. Absolutely. <laughs> the other one's going to blow him off or, you know, he's going to poke and prod and kind of feel around in that relationship and it's, he's going to, you know, be hitting um, a wall there and he's going to move on. Mm -hmm. He's going to keep going until he finds um, some of those traits and, and um, uh, years years ago I had a few psychopathic males in group one time and um, and I asked him I said how do you pick how do you pick you know uh, you're pretty good at this <laughs> mm -hmm. um, how, how do you do how do you do it and um, they said uh, two, two of them said you tell a sad story. Um, it's always really good if you can tell, you know, that you were abused as a child and, and see how she responds to that. And so what they're testing is empathy. And, and one of, you know, one of the trait elevations in these women is hyper empathy. And so, um, uh, so they, they know who, who they're looking for and they're always, um, gonna be, you know, be test, testing that. And so um, there very much is a profile. There, um, we do know that there are, um, there, there is a profile of women um, who end up in these relationships. Ironically, it is these elevated super traits that predators target that make her so at risk. Um, in the past, in the present, and in the future because we take those temperament traits with us. Um, but ironically, it is those exact temperament traits that are her strength and her resources and, and the, the things that she will tap into to be able to recover um, and to get through recovery and to recover with. And it is um, those exact trait elevations, um, you know, that put her at rest that are also going to be the things that take her into recovery. Let's talk about when a woman with these high temperament traits meets the psychopath, the mm -hmm. beginning stages, mm -hmm. the luring, mm -hmm. the attachment, the bonding mm -hmm. right at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, after hearing thousands of stories, um, uh, you, you begin to hear the commonalities. Every once in a while, you'll have someone that the beginning parts of the relationship um, were not good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 90 to 95 percent of the women say exactly the same thing, which is, um, the, in, the incredible uh, intensity of the attraction in these relationships. And, um, you know, one of the traits of psychopathy is, is the superficial charm. That is one of the diagnostic criteria, is that these people are charming. Mm -hmm. You know, if they all arrived into the relationship with uh, the swastika between their eyes, <laughs> like Charlie Manson, hey, we'd all see him coming, but that, that's not, not, you know, that's not the case. Uh, um, that, they, that the beginning parts of the relationship um, is the, the masks that mm -hmm. we call, um, that they wear, and this is their skill set, um, that they're good at hiding who they really are, and they're good at mirroring back um, and parroting back uh, what that person um, is, lo is looking for. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that the women always talk about is this intensity of attachment and th that the, the relationship 
um, in the beginning parts has an unusual intensity. Mm -hmm. And um, that intensity gets misread. I think people think of that intensity as sort of the myths that we all hear about our Prince Charming kind mm -hmm. of thing that, you know, when, when you hit all this intensity, oh my God, that must be soulmate status. You know, mm -hmm. that you're, you know, within 24 hours, you're, you know, inhaling and exhaling each other's air. I mean, you, you, you're never apart after that moment and that these people are very intense to experience. And for most of the general public who has never experienced a psychopath, uh, of course we don't know what that intensity is. I know what the intensity is because we've had, um, I've had them as patients in the past. Mm -hmm. And I know that they are intense to experience. But um, a person meeting this person for the first time at a party or whatever, that intensity has this electric vibe to it. These people are very alive. Mm -hmm. And um, and all the women talk about the same thing, the, the charmingness of it and this unusual intensity that they misread as sort of soulmate status. And um, we, we do a training for therapists in which we talk about that intensity. And, and that intensity is often a characteristic of the disorder. But when you, when you have no idea that this person is disordered, you're going to read that intensity however it is that you read it. You just think it's this really cool, sensual uh, vibe thing mm -hmm. that's happening between the two of you, and you don't really, you don't really know. What I feel that I found most interesting about the discussion within this video clip is how Sandra Brown talks about the fact that the very traits, the cocktail of traits that psychopaths target in individuals are the traits that are needed, that are necessary to help survivors can be healed through these very traits that the psychopaths target. And I found that to be the most interesting. To me, it was a very eye-opening. And I feel like it also gives hope to those with these, what I consider gifts, these wonderful traits uh, that they should share, continue to share with the world with caution and education on this topic. Thanks for being here and for watching the full clip. If you did, thanks for allowing me to share this with you. I ask that you stay tuned for more in touch and enlightening videos to come. Till next time. Bye-bye.